how's it going folks? Thought I'd bring you along and show you how we're using a bit of spare space in the aquaponics to sprout some wheat for the chooks, also known as chickens to some people. Uh, the sprouting process is a great way to unlock the nutrients or more nutrients uh, from the wheat, make it available for the chickens and ourselves. But I know sprouting grain does help some people, not everyone, but some people with wheat intolerances, so check it out if you've got some of those things. I'm not a doctor, don't take my word for it, go look it up for yourself. Uh, but as for the sprouting itself, we made up a little sprouting unit last year. It worked great through winter. Had a few issues with it during summer though. Um, black soldier flies moved in when they smelt the fermented hot grain and laid eggs in there. Ended up being a great black soldier fly larvae farm. But yeah, we didn't really want that. We wanted the sprouted grain. So we tipped that into the compost heap and we've been harvesting black soldier fly larvae from there. So check out the clip if you're interested in seeing what happened there. Um, but yeah, the little sprouting unit itself, we'll give, have a quick look at it and then I'll um, run through how I've broken it down and I'm using it in the aquaponics uh, just to get a couple of sprouts through for the chooks. So here's a little DIY sprouter. It's sitting in a flower pot on the base just to help give it a little bit more aeration in the bottom bucket, a little bit of drainage. Then four buckets, they're slightly over a gallon in size, probably around about the six litre mark I think. In the base of this bucket there's a series of holes and that's just to allow the water to drain out so it doesn't sit in there and go manky with the grain. The buckets sit on top of each other and to keep them from um, nestling um, very closely to the base of the next bucket I've popped in a couple of holes and put a zip tie through and that just sits on the lip there. Just gives the sprouts a little bit of air flow through there hopefully um, so they don't go manky. One downfall of that is I did find that the black soldier flies went through that bottom one and that's where they laid their eggs. The way these buckets work is on a bit of a rotational system. This bucket here has got the newest grain and then so on. The next one has some that has sprouted from the day before, just got a couple of little tails on it. Then you've got some with a bit of greenery and then down the base here you have some, whoops, I'll take the base off, um, with the green shoots. Now what would happen is this goes out to the chooks then you'd come through, add some more grain in it, rinse it out and pop it in the top here and away you go and you just cycle through day after day. Uh, what I was doing during winter is I was irrigating the tower in the morning when I put the new grain in after the chooks were fed and then in the afternoon I was also adding about another six litres or I think that's about a gallon and a half of water just flushing it through there just to keep the sprouts hydrated. I found in summer I had to do it three to four times a day uh, especially on those 104 or, 90 or 40 degree days we had. Um, I just really had to keep them well hydrated or they did get really smelly quickly. So that's how I was working them until we had the problem with the black soldier flies and yeah that's what made Bianca and I move over to the bed method so we'll go over and have a bit of a look. So this is the little sprouting setup we have in the grow bed. Basically what we have is the buckets with the holes in the base and they're sitting inside these flower pots with a couple of holes cut in the base of them that allows water to come through and then through the holes in the base of these little buckets. Now we've got the water coming in, well, actually we'll move to another bucket make it a little bit easier to see. Um, you can probably make out the water between those grains there and the siphon's going to initiate and all that water will just drain away again. So basically what you've got is the water coming in, hydrating the, um, the wheat berries and then draining out again. So it's keeping them fresh. We're not getting that funky smell we were getting in the tower system over summer. And yeah, it's just a great way I think to sprout these guys. So just to show you these grains here, these are grains that I put in yesterday and they're just starting to get their little um, shoots and roots form. Over the other end we have the grain that went in the day before and as you can see there's a little bit of greenery emerging from those guys. And this here is the grain from three days ago. So well and truly got their greens showing on some of them and they're the ones that I'll be taking out in a minute and feeding to the chooks. So getting these sprouts ready really doesn't take more than five minutes a day. Now this part's pretty easy. I mean all I'm doing is putting three scoops of grain in there and just to let you know um, it's no accurate measurement this is just an end cap a 40 millimeter end cap or an inch and a half end cap um, from the aquaponics so all I pretty much all do is just put the grain in there then I give it a bit of a wash out with the hose just to get any loose dust that may be um, accumulating in the wheat there out and then just pop it straight into the grow bed as I take the other bucket out to feed the chooks Here it is. And as you can tell, the girls really do like these sprouts. It doesn't take them long to polish them off at all. 
Funnily enough, the girls leave most of the grain that has green on it and they go straight for the sprouted part. So that's another reason why I thought that it would be a good idea just to go with the semi-sprouted rather than the long green sprouts. So there you go folks, there's my little take on using the aquaponic flood and drain beds to sprout some grain for the chooks. It's been going for about two weeks now. Yeah, about two weeks and we're finding it's working well. Um, just to let you know, to begin with I did have four of the little uh, buckets there but I found that the, um, the by the fourth day we were getting a bit of a fermented smell in there so I pretty much all just pulled it out and just running with the three. Um, also too, I, I really enjoy the fact that I don't have to come down three or four times a day and flush the water through, especially during summer. Winter it's not really an issue, just twice a day. But not having to flush the water through the, um, the tower, uh, not only is it saving water, but it's also saving time. So I think that's a bit of a bonus. Anyway, I'll leave it there, stop rabbiting on. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, pop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Um, other than that, I hope everyone's well and happy and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, gonna say bye. Bye. Bye.